and I love Allah and I love my Prophet Muhammad and I loved everything about being a Muslim. Very religious. We used to go to the mosque, you know, every single week. Um, my whole family, my cousin is a, is a sheikh. I was falling in this black abyss, falling so fast. It was so fast and I could feel the wind, like the wind from falling. It was taking my breath away. I couldn't even like breathe. And everything is enhanced a million times. Like you know everything instantly. You feel everything instantly. You hear everything instantly. Imagine this black enhanced by a million. That's how black. It was so black in this tunnel. I was, it was, I was falling so fast. And usually when you have a dream that you're falling, you'll pop up. And that's what I was waiting for. I was like, what, 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 what? And then I knew right away when my soul told me, you're go, you're dead. The and scream was so loud that in life, I will, I will blow the roof off my house. That's how I will bust out every windows because your voice is enhanced a million times. Every so I screamed, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la Muhammad Rasulullah, and I kept on screaming that, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I kept on screaming it faster, more and more and more, because I was so desperate. I, I had to get out of the situation. The, the hopelessness feeling is worse than being in hell itself. So I, there's, there's this white light flagging around me so fast. It's so fast. And right away, I knew it was a, my guardian angel. And it was screaming from the right ear to the left ear, screaming, screaming at me back and forth, Amir. Amir repeating itself, please, please, you have to listen to me. He can still hear you. You have to tell Jesus to come into your heart and save you. You have to do it now before your soul leaves your body. Do it before your soul leaves your body. Hurry, he can still hear you. He's the only one that can save you. Hi, welcome to Touching the Afterlife. Our guest today is Amir. Amir was raised in the Muslim faith. And when he was 12 years old, Jesus appeared to him. And then later on, he had a near-death experience, and that familiar face of Jesus returned. You don't want to miss this incredible story of conversion from the Muslim religion to a personal relationship with Jesus. So welcome, Amir. Such an honor. Thank you so much for having me. It's Peace such an honor. Peace to everybody. Assalamu yeah. alaikum to my Arab uh, brothers and sisters. Mm. And hopefully Amen. everybody's uh, doing well. God bless you all. Amen. So let's get started, Amir. Can you take us back to when you were 12 years old? Do you want to start there? So it happened when I was 12 years old. Um, me and my brother, we used to share a bedroom together. And um, my bed used to be against the wall. And his bed was like in the open area by the closet. Uh, and I didn't like where I had never liked where his bed was. So one night out of nowhere, just out of nowhere, uh, I went to him and I said, my brother's name is Bilal. So I said, Bilal, um, I want to sleep on your bed tonight. And he was even shocked because he knows how I am that I asked him that question. And I said to myself, why am I even asking him this question? Um, but we did. We switched and uh, I was sleeping. And then I hear my name twice and I open my eyes. And when I open my eyes, I just jumped. I just f just jumped off the bed. That's the first instinct I got. And when I jumped off the bed, I'm looking and I, I, I could see the floor with the corner of my, my body's frozen. And but I could move my eyes and the room is lit. It's like lit like a candle. So it's like a soothing light. So I see the floor from the from my corner of my eye because I'm this way. And I'm like, man, I'm not even touching the floor. So I, I and then I felt like this electric shock going through my body. And then I feel my body rising up. And as my body is rising up, once I got above my mattress, that's when I seen him clear again. And he was doing this with his hand. The, the motion of my body was going with the motion of his hand. And then he went like this and sat me down. And the first thing, instantly, the first thing he said was, do not be afraid. And then the second thing he said, do you know who I am? And instantly, without even thinking, like, what came out of, what came out of me was Jesus. And But we were communicating with our minds. It wasn't through uh, voice. It was telepathy. And when I said that, I could feel his smile so uh, he was very ha like so happy and so loving. It was it was just the most uh, it was an amazing feeling. And he started talking to me. And while he's talking to me, I'm saying to myself, "There's no way this is real." And at the same time that I'm saying this to myself, he said to me, "This is real." And while he's talking to me, I could see through him because he's a light. He's a beautiful uh, like the way I, I can't explain the way it was. He's a he's a beautiful uh, a light that you not like a light that you see here on Earth or any kind of light. This light was. 
uh, a light that was different than anything else. So when I looked through him, I could see my brother's body moving. And right then and then I knew this, I knew it was so real. And he said so many things to me, but I don't want to, I don't remember uh, everything he said. So I don't want to assume and make up stuff and say something that I don't, because everything I say right now is a hundred percent truth. I'm not going to, I'm not going to exaggerate anything. I'm not going to make up anything. Um, God is my witness. And, you know, of course, you know, I'm going to have a lot of backlash because I, oh, you know, I, I, you know, people leave me messages and stuff from uh, my, you know, from my, my Muslim brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm sorry that I upset you or that you're upset and uh, I'm an embarrassment or whatnot you want to say. Uh, uh, fake, I'm a fake uh, Muslim or whatever, you know, they say these things to me, but, you know, I still, no matter what, I was there. So I know exactly how they feel. And I love them no matter what. It's just I was there. So I can't be mad at them because I was worse. I used to say worse than that. You know, I I used to tell people, you know, Jesus, are you serious? So back to the story when I was so after that, I never told nobody because I was first I was terrified. And second, because I'm Muslim and I love Allah and I love my Prophet Muhammad and I loved everything about being a Muslim. So I never told my parents because they would think I'm nuts and uh, cause a problem. Let's put it that way. And I didn't want to you know, get, get punished. So I left it. I kept it inside of me for so many years, but I always heard his voice in my heart telling me to remember him. Mm. And I always wondered and I always prayed and asked God, why, why did, why did you want me to go on my brother's bed instead of my, it's, why couldn't he just come and see me on my own, on my own bed? And I never knew that I never got the answer until after I received him. And it came to me right away. And the reason why is because if he would have did it where I was sleeping, I would have panicked and I would have hit the wall and hurt myself and woke up the whole house. Mm. And that's why he made me switch with my brother's bed because it was an open spot. And he knew that I was going to get scared and jump up, jump. Mm. And so years went by and, Throughout my whole year, years, you know, I was so proud. I, I kept, I was in denial, but I was so proud to be Muslim. I loved everything about it. That's why people say, they say to me, why are you, why are you Christian? People always say, oh, because you live, you, you were raised in the West. Oh, you were raised with this and were raised with Christians. This, this, well, first of all, it has nothing to do with where I'm raised at. Because where I was raised at, it was like the Middle East. I, I'm from Dearborn, Michigan, the most Muslim community in the United States. So basically I was in the Middle East. Um, and my parents, especially my mom, she's very religious, very religious. We used to go to the mosque, when, you know, every single week. Um, my whole family, my cousin is a, is a sheikh. Um, and a lot of people, you know, they disconnected from me. Um, but I received so much more love and friends from, you know, the, the people that God put in my life is just a blessing. It's unreal. You know, it's just unbelievable how things God work in. It's just amazing, and and being a uh, me being a Christian, it's not because it's nothing about it is easy. People think, oh yeah, Christianity is so easy, you could do everyone. It's so hard being a straight Christian, very hard. I don't know what I thought the same thing. Oh man, once you're Christian, you can do whatever you want, drink, party. Oh yeah, God will forgive you. It doesn't work this way. Mm -hmm. and, so Amir, you were 12 years old when this happened. Jesus showed himself to you and it was very vivid and real. And yes. you then, but you were brought up in the Muslim religion. And even after this experience, you continue to do so oh, for yes, years. Yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm 46 now. So mm -hmm. from 12 to 42, that's when I received them. I was straight, strict Muslim, man. I, I, I was proud, proud to be a Muslim. I, I used to, I even got, um, I even got, Islam tattoo just to show that I'm not no fake Muslim getting paid. Allahu Akbar Islam. That's what I used to wear this and show it off proudly, even though in Islam tattoos are forbidden. But this was this I used it as a way to go, you know, in case Christians want to, you know, have questions because I used to always, always uh, go against, uh, you know, I used to always look forward to debate with Christians and, you know, just show them how it is, you know, and I have my uncle. I have an uncle that back in the 80s, he converted and he got shunned and he moved away. And we don't talk. We never talked to him nothing. And any time he came to visit, we used to make fun of him. And I used to make sure I used to want to meet him to debate him all the time. I used to tell him, man, are you sick in the head? What are you thinking, bro? What do you mean? Because we used to always think it was from his wife. 
I go, bro, you changed your whole religion. You left Allah. You come in shirk. And shirk means when you make in partners with God. That's like the biggest sin in Islam. Mm. Uh, putting partners with God. And I that's what I told him. I go, bro, you're committing shirk. Are you crazy worshiping Jesus and this and that? I go, over a woman? Are you either hurt? convert you like that he was like jesus saved me not my wife well no you know i go well i don't know that is this doesn't work here you can't there's no way because with with my whole entire being there's no way anybody can convince me mm. I, I i with all my heart and soul i knew and thought islam was the truth and the way and everybody else is just got lost you know like yeah. how can they you know, Islam is so beautiful. It's, you know, praying five times a day, fasting, uh, taking care of each other, all that stuff, you know, and uh, our women are modest. They dress, you know, they wear on their heads and all this stuff, you know. And I thought we, I thought it was the true in the right, the right way until February 1st of 2020. Okay. Yes. So reminds me of Paul, first of all, in the Bible. That's and why you, I love, that's why when yeah. everybody tries to go against Paul, I go, man, that's why I believe Paul. Because yeah. just like me, nobody will believe me. I'm not. I'm not here to convince people. I'm not here to try to convert to people. It's not my. It's not me. That's the spirit's gonna do that. I'm just here right. to tell the truth, to tell my story. Because I owe Jesus every single ounce of my breath. I owe it to Him, and this is the least I can do. This is the least I can do, is to share my story. Because I don't like. I don't. I never like being like, telling people this kind of stuff because I don't like being mocked at. I get up, you know, I used to get, I get upset mm -hmm. when I get mocked at and laughed about and stuff because it upsets me. It hurt, it burdens me and it hurts me because it's not, I'm not lying. I'm not making anything up. I'm not exaggerating. Like he really is real. Like I can't, I can't believe it. You know, it's like, I can't believe it. Like somebody else in my shoe that, that had what happened, they would have, they would have submitted right away. But me, the, even the most religious, religious, religious guy, religious Muslim would have done it before me because well, that, that's just a testament. He can break through anything or anyone. So that, take, man, take us wow. to February 1st, 2020. Take us through what happened. Man, this is the roughest one. So uh, I must, he, he, me just ignoring him for so many years. Uh, finally, he, he like killed me. He let me know what, that, where I was gonna go when I was dying. I, I was in the, I was in between death and uh, the spiritual realm. So, I was falling in this black abyss, falling so fast. It was so fast, and I could feel the wind, like the wind from falling. It was taking my breath away. I couldn't even <gasps> like breathe. And right away, like right away, I like everything is enhanced a million times like you know everything instantly you feel everything instantly you hear everything instantly instantly this black abyss wasn't just like black like my black t-shirt imagine this black enhanced by a million oh, that's how black it was so black in this tunnel or whatever it was it was just imagine just go somebody taking you in a in an airplane above a desert in, in the middle of the night and just pushing you off that airplane and it's pitch black and I was fallen and fallen and fallen. And right away, right away, my soul told me right away. It, your soul talks to you. Like you, it's, it's, I can't explain it. Like the way I explain it in words is, is the closest I can get to the reality of it. But I was, it was, I was falling so fast. And usually when you have a dream that you're falling, you'll pop up. And that's what I was waiting for. I was like, well, come on. What? And then I knew right away when my soul told me, you're going, you're dead. And right away, I said, what we say in Islam is the shahada. It, and it, in Arabic, I'm going to say in Arabic, and then I'll translate it for you. But when I screamed this, the scream was so loud that in life, I will, I will blow the roof off my house. That's how I will bust out every windows because your voice is enhanced a million times. Everything is enhanced. Everything. You can fill every single hair, every single cell. You know everything. You hear everything like enhanced everything is so crisp and piercing <sighs> so i screamed and i kept on screaming that allahu akbar allahu akbar i kept on screaming it faster more and more and more because i was so desperate I, I had to get out of the situation and right away my soul told me it's not true you're going to hell for eternity it's not true so I'm like, what do you mean it's not true? What do you mean? What's not true? What's not true? And while I'm while I'm while I'm 
I'm not saying this in voice. And this is going through my mind. Every a million things are going through my mind. My whole life and everything's going through my mind. What do you mean? What's what's going on here? You know? Am I missing anything? What am I missing? Am I missing to say anything? What am I missing here? And I'm still screaming, Allahu Akbar, Allah, Allah, please, ya Allahu Akbar. Which means God's the greatest. And uh, the shahada, when ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu an la Muhammad Rasulullah, means I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is His messenger. So I screamed that I screamed Allahu Akbar about ten times, screaming, screaming. Nothing happened. My soul told me that you're going out for eternity. So right, right when I felt the hopelessness, that like man, the hopeless. This is this is the word that I, that will never. The most important word in my life is hope, because when you feel the hopelessness in the afterlife compared to a hopelessness that you feel on earth is I don't even let nothing get to me anymore. Nothing worries me no more. The the hopelessness feeling is worse than being in hell itself because knowing that God, because the only last hope you have is God. And once you know that he is separated from you and he does not hear you because he didn't hear me. And that hopeless feeling, I don't wish I'm the worst person in the world. That's how bad this, this is, this is the, the hopelessness is just unbearable. Nobody can, nobody can ever, ever, ever be able to handle handle the 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 feeling the feeling of detachment from God the feeling that God does not hear you and he will never ever hear you or help you once you're done so I, there's there's this white light flagging around me so fast it's so fast and right away I knew it was a gu my guardian angel and this guardian angel's voice is the most scariest and the most beautiful voice in one that's the only way I can ever explain it in reality it's it and it it never leaves me. It's always every single day I hear this voice, this angel's voice. <laughs> and, it, and it was screaming from the right ear to the left ear, screaming, screaming at me back and forth. Amir, Amir, repeating itself. Please, please, you have to listen to me. He can still hear you. You have to tell Jesus to come into your heart and save you. You have to do it now before your soul leaves your body. Do it before your soul leaves your body. Hurry, he can still hear you. He's the only one that can save you. And and I'm and I'm like, what do you mean, Jesus? What do you mean, Jesus? What, what about Allah? What about what about Allah? what do you mean, Jesus? That that's last the like. I would never in a billion years ever think that Jesus would be the one to rescue me, and I was still denying it. Even at that moment, I was like in denial. I was like, "There's no way. How how can this be? What about Allah? How can this be? How can this be?" And it's telling me, "Hurry, hurry, hurry!" And and then I I'm looking down and I see another like a, a another like a, a a portal like you could it's like another portal and I knew like that was the end of it right there right before I screamed I said, "Jesus, come into my heart and save me!" In a big flash and a thunder. That's how the but this thunder was. It would it would it would shake the whole earth. That's how this thunder was, Boom! like that. And my body, my body came, my soul came right back into my body with so much force that I was sore for about three three or four days. I was sore, and my body came out of my. I jumped out of my bed like this, pouring sweat. My wife was next to me sleeping. She woke up, and and I'm like, baby, not believe what happened to me. I died. I died. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Jesus saved me. Jesus saved me. She's like, babe, babe, you had a nightmare. Just go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Cause she was. It was late. So, in other words, Amir, you were crying out before your body was completely dead. That you had this time frame to cry out to get saved from Jesus. Is that right? Correct. It, it, it's. It reminds me of the story of Jonah. How Jonah was was crying out to God, but he like, but he wasn't like fully on the other side yet. You know what I'm saying? It, it, that's the, that's the closest I could get to it. It was weird like that. Cause after I read that story, it, it just flashed. I'm like, wow. Because so many of, so many things, my, my dreams that he gave me after, like I seen them in the Bible before I even read them in there. And mm -hmm. like, before I even seen them in there, it, 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 like I'll get to that story later about something like that, but it, it's crazy. And that when this angel's he was this angel was so desperate for me it was so desperate for me it was so desperate it was it was it was screaming please you have to tell him before your soul leaves your body it kept on telling me that before hurry 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 do it now hurry it was rushing it was rushing like hurry you have to do it now so i i did it and when my body came back and I got up and everything, even I didn't go back to sleep because I was scared. You know, I, I didn't know if I had a heart because I, I think I had a heart attack or something, but I don't know, you know, I, but I, and I, I'm the stubborn guy that I never go to the hospital for, for anything. 
and my wife was like, did you want me to call one or something? I go, no, man, no, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what happened to me. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh. And my, my, my chest is sore. So I, I didn't go to sleep or nothing. So I went, got ready, went to work in the morning and on the way to work, you know, I'm just crying my eyes out. And I said to myself, I'm going to read the Quran again. I'm going to read the Quran again. I have to, because in Islam, we believe that sometimes the devil plays tricks on us and he can come looking like somebody or, 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 uh, or put stuff in your mind and stuff like that. But then, but then right away, right when I think like that, God answers me and says, no, because I screamed Allah, I screamed the Shahada and I screamed Allah's name so many times. And I screamed Jesus name one time and he gave me back my life. Mm. Allah didn't hear me. Allah didn't hear me. I screamed. That's the only one I looked to. That's the only one I had hope for. That's the only one I knew that would save me. And he didn't save me. He didn't even hear me. He didn't even hear me. But Jesus heard me. And I didn't even believe in Jesus like that. I just thought he's a prophet in Islam. He's a prophet to us. He's a very important prophet. You know, but nothing more, nothing less. He was a miracle. We believe, we know, we believe that he did miracles. We believe that he was born from a uh, uh, virgin. We believe that he was sinless. The only thing we didn't believe is that he wasn't crucified. You know, when you were falling down this abyss and you were calling out to Allah over and over in those prayers, can I ask you how long did that feel like? Did it seem like it took forever? How long did this experience feel like to you? No, no, no. I mean, the falling part, I was wondering, like, when is it going to end? Because, you know, like when you're on, it, it was like I was on a constant roller coaster going down fast. I don't know if you've ever been on a roller coaster when it goes up and then it goes whoosh, like that. But, my breath, like my breath, I couldn't even catch my breath. Like I could feel the wind just, it, I was falling so fast and it was taking forever to fall down. It was like taking so long. It was taking so long. That's why I kept on like, no, how can this be? How can this be? But at the same time, it, it's weird because there's no time. So it felt long, but it wasn't long. If that makes sense. I can't explain it in reality how it was. There's no sense of time there. Everything is just, everything is just boom, 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 boom. Everything is immediate, immediate, immediate. Like right away, right when I knew I was gonna, I was dying. Right away, I knew that that my guardian angel. Right away, I knew it was my soul talking to me. Right away, I knew I was, uh, I was done for. Right away, everything is right away. Everything is right away. You don't even have time. You, you, there's nothing to think. Your body, your soul knows everything at the, at, like this at an instant. Like you don't even need to think about anything. You know, and and that's what that's what was freaking me out because I was falling and this angel was screaming in my voice that and he's he can he's the only one that can save you. He's the only one. And like I was like, how can this be, though? How how can this be? You know, even in that moment, even in that moment and even 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 though I accepted Jesus and I, I said, come into my heart and save me in that moment. I still was in the night. I still could. I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be true. Like, I, 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 I was so, I was so proud to be Muslim. You know, I was like, there's no way. You know, there's no way. There's got to be. It's got to be the shaitan. In, in Arabic, the devil means sh uh, shaitan, uh, playing tricks on me. Because ever since you know, you know, when you learn about it, you know, the devil plays a lot of tricks on us. So I read the Quran again, and this time, reading it was so different. Like. My eyes were like opened, like 360. I had 360 vision. Like before I had tunnel vision. Now I have 360 vision. Like everything that I read before and I'm reading it now, it, it's like, it's like, what? It's like, what? I used to really believe this stuff. Like, I can't believe what I used to believe. That's what I, that's what I say. I cannot believe what I used to believe. Especially when it came to the crucifixion of Jesus. I couldn't accept it no more. I couldn't accept that. Uh, you know, before, like, I was like, yeah, okay, Allah made it, you know, because in Islam, Jesus wasn't crucified. Allah Allah put somebody else to look like Jesus to be crucified. Hmm. That's what we, that's what in Islam they believe, that they believed. And that's what I, that's what I believed in. But then this time it was different. And this time the voice of this angel, when I tell you this voice of this angel, it never leaves me. It never, till this day. It's always in my brain, always in my ear. Remember, he's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can save you. Kept that, that's all I kept on hearing every time when I'm, when, even when I'm reading the Quran. 
you know, and before the Quran, I'm saying the prayers and I'm saying, please, Ya Allah, please guide me. Please, God, guide me, Ya Allah, guide me, guide me to the truth, please, please. And it's crazy because it took me eight months. What I did was I read the Quran and I I took notes and I read the Bible. I read I read the Bible too. So it's funny because when I read when I read the Bible, every time I see like these dreams, because he gives me so many, he gave me so many dreams after after this fact, especially after I accepted him. So let me get back to the eight months. It took me eight months from February to October. And on Halloween, October of 2020 is when I uh, received him as my Lord and Savior. Uh, it was Halloween, October. Me and my wife, we went to Tennessee. And it's crazy how God just works in these mysterious ways. So I tell when I told my you know cousins or somebody, my close friends about what happened to me, they tell me, oh, no, man, it's the shaitan playing tricks on you. So there's only one person that I can talk to about this that I trust that I could, that nobody would think that I'm nuts. And that was my uncle that's Christian that I, that I didn't, you know, really care about. So I called him and I told him about my, I told him about my dream and right away and right away uh, he told me, and then I told him, I'm, I got to go, you know, I got, I'm going to go on a little trip. He was like, well, where are you going? I go, I'm going to Tennessee. He was like, really? He was like, it's me and my wife's 50th anniversary. We're planning on something too. And he was like, we can meet you there. I'm like, really? I was like, that would be great because I want to tell you everything that happened. I want to, I want you know, explain it and stuff. So we met there, and when we met there, he stayed there for three days. Me and my wife stayed there for a week, and every day we were together. We never talked about nothing until one night I told him about what happened to me, and I told him about when I was a kid. And then he said, "Well, I just got." He told me. Uh, Matthew 10, 28, if you're laden and heavy, heavy burden and laden, uh, just come to him and he'll take it all away. And that's what was my problem because I was, I was in a struggle. I, 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 I love being Muslim and I, I wanted to stay Muslim, but at the same time, I don't want to go to hell and I don't want to have that hopelessness, that hopelessness feeling. So then we were walking one day, me and my uncle, his last day there, we were walking outside and I'm trying to tell him about Muhammad. I'm telling him, you know, yeah, man, I, you know, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to justify everything. And he looks me in my eyes. He was like, Amir, you know the truth. Don't even say anything else. You know the truth. That's all I got to say. He told me, you, you know the truth. Do what you got to do. So we left it at that. So that's the day he left. So that night it was Halloween and me and my wife were at a hotel. So my mom, uh, my mom calls me because me and my son, we had a, we had a bad um, fallout. Um, me being, uh, uh, you know, a Muslim and very, you know, we're we're raised to honor our parents no matter what until we're even when we're old. You know, we can, we never disrespect. I never disrespected my dad. Never said nothing, uh, talked back to him or nothing, and I didn't tolerate it at all. So, I told him get out of the house. You're not gonna, you know, live by the rules. You're not gonna live right over here, then go. So he, he stayed with my parents. So my mom calls me and it was the last night we were going to be there. We were leaving in the morning. She says, Amir, your son bought a gun and I don't want it in my house. So I go, okay, then call the cops on him and tell him you don't want it. And she's like, I'm not going to do that. My grandson, I go put him on the phone. So he comes on the phone and I tell him, listen, I go, I'm going to only tell you this one time, take that gun. Turn it into the police station. When I before, if you don't, I'm, when I come there, I'm gonna beat you with it. So then he tells me you you ain't gonna do, and he said the s word. I said what? So I just blew, I just blew the fuse. And he was like, yeah, you ain't gonna do nothing. You think you're gonna do something? I'm, you know, no, 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 no. I go, I go. Listen, do me a favor, keep that energy. I'm gonna be there in seven hours because I wasn't gonna wait till the next day. I hung up the phone on him and I started yelling at my wife and cussing my wife out and blaming her. It's your fault. You know, this is why me and my son were, were a few because you're always sticking up for him. You're always taking his side. And now this is not look at now. Look, I go, listen, I go, you got 10 minutes to pick up your stuff. If you don't pack up your stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to be gone. I'm telling you right now, you figure out a way home, fly. So I went out the room and I went in the elevator and right in the elevator, my, I heard that, that voice that always been in me. I can help you. Remember me. Remember me. I can help you. Then the angel's voice coming to me. So then I was like, man, stop it. I don't want to hear, hear this 
stuff. Stop it. You know, like I'm like, I'm thinking my mind's trying to mess with me. So I'm sitting in my truck and it was a beautiful, 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 clear night. And I look at the sky and I'm crying. I'm really like, I'm like, I'm like saying in my head, like, I'm really going to go. I'm going to go back to Michigan. I'm going to hurt this kid. That's it. So he just, he just broke the straw that camel's back on this one. So I looked at the sky, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that inside of me. I didn't want to. So I looked at the sky. I'm like, you know what? You keep on haunting me. You keep on coming at me throughout this whole time since I was 12 years old. If you are who you say you are, come into my heart and save me. Oh, and I'm sorry. Let me, let me, let me back up. Let me back up. My uncle, the Christian one, he was already, he went back home already. I'm sorry, because I didn't know exactly what to say. So after I said that, I wanted to confirm. So I called him up again. I said, please, uh, uncle, did I, did I say it right? I, 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 I asked you, and he couldn't believe me. He was like, oh, really? Really? You want you sure? About he goes, Amir, are you sure? Are you sure? I go, I'm 100%. I can't take it no more. I, I can't. I'm, I'm desperate. I go, this is, my, this is my hope right here. I can't do it, especially with all this that happened to me. So he told me, uh, repeat after him, and I, re I repeat. He goes, Amir, do you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross and rose the third day for your sins? And I told him, yeah. I go, yes, I really do. I really do. Like, I really do. And I, I and, and deep inside my soul, I, I knew it. I knew it, but I'm, I was trying to cover it. I was trying to deny it so bad. And then he's you know he he teared up and everything and then i told him you know i, I gotta I, I i something's happening something something's really happening here something's really weird happening so i hung up with him and that's when i, I looked at the sky again i was like just uh, please confirm to me you're in my heart please and then that's i felt this weight like <sighs> this black this blackness this darkness just coming out of me and i felt tingly Ting, uh, tingly feeling everywhere like when your arm falls asleep that's the kind of feeling i kept on feeling everywhere everywhere and it was scary and it was so scary and i'm like wow what's going on here and then and then that's when my heart just sank and i went i went back i got out of my truck i went upstairs to the hotel room and i opened the door and my wife was packing and i grabbed her and i hugged her right away i didn't say a word to her and then while i'm hugging her i told her babe i'm so sorry i gotta tell you something just please because she's crying i go just please just listen I go, I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to tell Jesus to save me. I had to do it. I had no choice. I had to do it. And she backed up like this. She's like, what? What did you do? I go, I, I gave, I gave in, I, I surrender. I, I'm, I'm giving everything to Jesus. That's it. He's my savior. He's my Lord. That's it. I, I have to believe in him. I have to, I have to. He, something's not, something, something's making me do this. I, I don't understand it, but I know it. I know it. And when you know it, you know it, you know? So I'm, I'm just crying. I'm crying. And then, and then she could she can't believe it. And then she was like, and I've been with my wife for what 27 years now. And she said to me, that's the first time that she ever felt a hug like that from me. Ever. Mm. And then I'm freaking out. I'm crying because I'm so scared. Maybe did I do the right thing or not? So then this, you know, the doubts, doubts started crashing on me. So I turned this TV on. And it's a Christian uh, gospel choir singing about somebody that's, if they're going through hard times, if, if they're heavy laden, burdened, just like my uncle said that Matthew 10, 28, and I'm like, or 11, 20, one of the, I forgot which, which one it was, but I was like, no way. And I shut it off. And then, so I went on the balcony. And when I went on the balcony, I see bomb, uh, this hotel had bonfire pits for, for their guests. And it was odd because for a beautiful night like that, I figured that it would be packed, you know, because it was packed in Tennessee when we went. It was it was Halloween week. You know, they had Halloween parties and all that kind of stuff. But there was nobody at these fire pits. And there was like one, two, three, there's like four of them. So I said to my wife, I got to get some fresh air. Please, You want to come with me, please? And she was like, yeah, yeah. So we go and we're sitting on this fire pit. And I'm trying to explain to her what's going on. And then I'm looking at this lady. She comes on her balcony to smoke a cigarette. And she's smoking a cigarette and she was like, OMG, look behind you. And I look like this. And honest, I like, I never in a million years ever seen something like this. The moon, it, it, it was three moons. It was three rings around the moon. And it was like, it was like right close. It looked like it was a close up. Like, like it looked like the earth just moved or the moon moved close to, close to the earth. It was that close. It looked like an eye shape, right? And then my heart, right away, my heart says, 
that's for you. And then my wife was like, I think that's for you. I'm like, come on. I was like, wow, how, what do you mean? What, what, my heart just told me the same thing. I'm like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? I'm like, there's no way this is happening. There's no way, man. I was like, there is no way. I go, I go, I go, I was like, there's no way. I was like, that's it. I'm, 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 I'm checking out, you know? And we were, we were checking out. It, it was late. It was like about, now it was about late. It was after midnight. And we went to the room because we got to wake up early to get some rest. And I was like, there's no way I can sleep. And I, honest to goodness, I cried from Tennessee to Michigan nonstop. My wife had to drive and I couldn't stop crying. No matter how hard I tried, I could not stop crying. I just could not stop crying. The love, the love that came over me the love and knowing that I'm secure and safe, like right away, all my fear, like, especially death, death used to be my biggest fear. I used to be so scared to die. So scared. And that went away instantly. Like I didn't, I couldn't believe it. And then while I'm crying, I'm asking God, please, you know, I got OCD. You got to give it to me. You, know, you got to let me know, man. You got to let me know I'm doing the right thing. I'm so scared because in Islam, there's a couple sins that are unforgivable. The, the first one is shirk putting partners with God. And the second one is leaving your religion, leaving Islam. And that is a death penalty in the Middle East. I mean, uh, if uh, if they kill me, they would, uh, if somebody would kill me, if I go in the Middle East and they kill me, they, they get a, pe a free pass to heaven. Okay, because I left my religion and they're taking care of that. So, and I was so scared, you know, and I was, not only that I was so scared of that, but I was so scared because I'm going to destroy my whole family once they find out. And my family is huge. And I'm going to cause a lot of damage. And I did. I destroyed my whole I destroyed my family's name. My dad's embarrassed. Um, like, he, he does like, you know, if he wants to go to overseas and stuff, he's embarrassed. Because everybody in overseas, they knew bef it, it, everything. The love, the love of Christ, the love of Christ that he gave, he, what he, the love that he gave me and put in me. I thought that I could be an undercover Christian. That's what my plan was. My plan was to keep it secret and to go on acting like I'm a Muslim just for my family's sake. But I couldn't contain it. And that first week, I told my family that first week. But on the way back from Tennessee, when I was crying and God kept on showing me these signs, every time I, like, with all my heart, please, God, show me something. And I'll open my eyes and, and then I'll take up. I would take a picture and sometimes my wife would pass it. I'd have her, I would have to make a turn around again because I have, people were not, people will not believe this. Like, I still can't believe it. You know, it's like, wow, what is going on? How can this be? You know, there's no way. Why me? I'm how I didn't believe in Jesus and he's doing all this for me. You know, like what? <sighs> Man, it's unreal. How, how much is love has, I wish people knew how much they are loved. Everybody is so loved. If people knew how much they really are loved, this world would be so right and so loving. That's how God wants us to be. You know, love each other. That's why I love your neighbor like you love yourself. That's what he meant by that. Love each other. If we loved each other like this, I mean, we would have heaven on earth. And mm. and if people knew how much they how much they are loved, they would be more faithful. They'll be more passionate. You know, okay. people always people want. People want signs, they want visions, they want this and that and this and that, and then they want to believe. And 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 I always tell, and uh, like in John 20, 29, Thomas, you know, see, I wish I didn't have to see. I wish I would have believed without seeing because he said to Thomas, you have seen me and believe, but blessed are the ones that haven't seen and yet believe. So the ones that haven't seen nothing, you're so blessed more than you realize it. That's the power. I wish you guys can realize how blessed how blessed you are. And, and it, it hurts me because even after all that he showed me and everything that he's done for me, I, I, I get mad at myself because I see people that nothing, they never had no visions, no signs, no nothing. And their faith and their passion is so beautiful that I, I want, I should be that person. You know, it's like, that's how I, I'm supposed to be, you know? But Amir, you, you have to understand too, you have, you, Jesus knows you and what you were 
indoctrinated with and you needed this he's that that's how gracious and loving he knew what you needed so everybody's walk is different and for you you know and obviously you know as you grow in your faith you know maybe it's not going to be as a parent all the time but at that time you needed that and so he was so gracious to give you so many signs can you tell us about those signs yeah uh i i mean there'll be signs like he showed me, uh, uh, like when I was telling him, please show me a sign and I'll look up and it's a 50 foot cross right there. Boom. Take pictures of it. Uh, bumper stickers on cars. Um, uh, Jesus came into like that night when I was coming back, I was crying and we, if, the whole time he was showing me so many things. And then I had, I had to go to the bank to deposit money because I own a business. So I had to deposit money so the checks don't bounce. So when I pulled up to the ATM machine, I told him, please show me another sign. And the car in front of me was a, uh, a GMC Envoy. And it said, Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I took a picture. I took pictures uh, of everything. And I have videos of everything to prove, you know, that I, I, I'm this is real stuff. And it's crazy because I hurt my back really bad. And I ruptured. I got two ruptured discs. So I couldn't walk. I, and my body was like this, and this was in Chris, uh, during Christmas time. So I went to the doctors, and they told me what my problem was, and he said, you can't lift up a paper clip for six weeks. And I laughed at him. I go, listen, man, I got a business. I go, there's no way that I'm going to be able to close my business now for six weeks. I'd, I'd go broke and bankrupt. He was like, well, either that or you're going to suffer for the rest of your life. Pick one. I go, well, I guess I'm going to have to suffer for the rest of my life. So, and it's crazy because it snowed so bad this week it snowed so much and when i pulled up to my business the plow guy never showed up this is how amazing god is it's just so crazy how everything is put together like when i think deep about it and so i said to myself i'm gonna shovel this but when i shovel it i'm, I'm gonna be done for like i'll probably i won't be able to even open up the shop so i shoveled as much as i can my back was killing me i had my back brace my back was killing me so bad. And I said, let me just open for a few hours and I'll probably just have to close and go home because it's unbearable. The pain is just too much. It's exc excruciating. So I open up my shop and I'm on the last chapter of the Bible, Revelations, the last chapter 22. And my Bible, it's this one actually. So I, I highlighted everything in my Bible. Okay. And this this chapter, I know it, didn't, I was, it wasn't read before. Because it wasn't highlighted, so I'm reading. I'm reading, twenty, chapter twenty-two from the first first few chapters. So while I'm reading this, I'm like, I like had deja vu. I'm like, man, where did I, where this? Why does this sound so familiar? Why does this story sound so familiar? And it hit me right away. He get the say. I had the same exact dream. And. I couldn't believe it. So I, I read it again. And right when I read it again, I freaked out. And I, this electric shock that I felt when I was a kid, I felt it again going through my feet, all the way through my body. And you're not going to, Julie, you're not going to believe this. My back was healed instantly. Mm. I thought my mind was playing tricks. Honest to God, my, I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. I took off my back brace. I started, you know, going up and down, kicking in the air. I, I'm trying. I was trying to hurt myself on purpose. When a customer came in, I was trying to hurt myself on purpose because there's, I couldn't believe it. There's no way I go. There's this got my mind. There's no way my mind is playing tricks. There's no way my back is just healed like this. And this was, this was two and a half years ago, and I never had. A, I never had my back's never had that pain. That's again. incredible. Wow. Never. And it, it's crazy because that's why I got this t-shirt. There's so much power in this name. Right. So much power. I screamed his name out one time and he gave me my life back. He gave me my back back. He gave me love that I never knew what love was until I have his love. I mean, I thought I knew what love was, but you, know, you would never know what love was until you had the love of Jesus in you. It's un, it's uncontainable. You can never explain it into words. Uh, it, the, it's so amazing. And you want to do everything you can to glorify him. And this is what, like doing these kind of things. I, I never thought in a million years and you can never pay me the enough amount of money first to ever risk my soul 
mm. for, for anybody's words or anybody's wisdom or anybody's belief. Because that's, and that's, and I, I love that uh, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, do not lean on your own understanding, but on understanding of God. And that's the problem. People always want to think they can figure God out. Mm-hmm. And all that we can never figure God out. God is not supposed to make sense to us. Our brain is this big. Okay. And people want to make sense of God. You can never make sense of God. That's why he says, just trust me. You just mm-hmm. trust me. Trust me and I'll deal with it. Give me all your stuff and I'll deal with it. You know, you might not understand. I might not have all the answers to everything that people want to ask me, but I know, you know, when you know, you know, you know, when you know in your soul, in your heart, when you're, when your breath, your every single breath, like I can't even breathe without Jesus. Like I can't even breathe without him. He's on my mind 24 seven, you know, and, and be, because I, the hope, when you feel this hopelessness feeling, Mm-hmm. You can never turn your. I will can never ever. I'd be a fool. One, you know what you I never- love, uh, Amir, is how when you were showing the Bible, how you have it so highlighted, and I can tell that you are just really hungry for the truth and hungry for for God. And yeah, not- what is can, what is? Can you just talk a little bit about what how you've grown in that and and what it, that means with even your well, Muslim faith and and how that looks well, today? I did, I did, I highlighted that, but I also did the Quran too, and I also wrote so much stuff that stuck out to me and, and the, like how, how, how every time, like I came across something and if I was confused about it, he would just answer it for me. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's so amazing. Um, and it's just, uh, man, he talks, he, he talks to you through the Bible. That's that, that's how I know the Bible is so true because not only did I see so many of my dreams in the Bible, but before I even read them, it's just, it, it he speaks through me. He, he like, I, he speaks to me through that. And this is the funny, this is another thing that I'm sorry, I forgot. It's, the, it's things coming back to me. So when that, when that thing happened to me, when, when I died and came back uh, during the eight months that I was, you know, reading the Quran and the Bible back and forth, uh, about three months went by and my wife calls me and I answered and I, and she was like, babe, do you, are you busy? Do you have time? And I could sense the urgency. I was like, no, what's wrong? What's going on? She's like, I just remembered a dream that I had. Some lady cut me off and her bumper sticker, it bring my dream back to me. I was like, oh boy. I was like, what? You know? And she said that um, in our in our um, master bedroom, we have a walk-in closet. In our walk-in closet, we have a washer and a little a stack of a washer and dryer there. So she don't have to go all the way in the basement to wash little light laundry. So she'll, she'll do it in our closet. So she had a dream that she was doing laundry and she was folding clothes and she was bending over folding clothes. And then our doors have mirrors, long mirrors on each one. So when she got up, uh, she, uh, she got blinded because the light reflecting from the mirror, it blinded her. So she couldn't see and she panicked right away. And then she felt somebody touching her right shoulder and right away she felt eased. And my, my wife never read the Bible, doesn't know anything about the Bible. My wife, Muslim, never nothing. So, she said, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? How come I can't see you? And he told her, you're not strong enough to see me. And then he told, and then she told him, well, where's, where's Amir at? Where's Amir? And he told her, Amir will, Amir's coming back. But when he comes back, tell him Jeremiah 33, three. And we never knew this. And that's what that lady's sticker, when she cut her off, it was Jeremiah 33, three. So I, I Googled it and it said, call on to me and I will show you amazing things that you do not know. And I was like, and when I seen that, I was in the night, I was like, babe, maybe because I keep on, I keep on telling you about what happened to me. And maybe that's why you had this dream, you know? And she was like, she was like, then huck, uh, but I forgot about it. And this lady just cut me off, you know? And that's how I remembered. And that's crazy because <laughs> man, it's so amazing how much he does how much God does if people open their eyes and realize it. I mean, you just got to open your eyes. There's so many things that he shows us, but people don't see it. You know, they don't see it. And, and it's crazy. And then that happened. And then, like I said, the love that, the love that, that he gave me, it will never, it can never, it can never be taken away like I was telling you before, you know, I have my cousins, my friends, my family always coming at me, always coming at me with all kinds of different uh, things, accusations, or, you know, oh, how can you do that? How can, well, do you believe, you know, they try, you know, this and that. Then they had 
my family had an intervention with me. When I told my dad, he kicked me out the house instantly. He didn't even want to hear it. He wouldn't even give me a chance to tell him, finish anything. As soon as I told him, he goes, what? And my dad has a broken accent because he's Middle Eastern. <laughs> and so he's telling me this in Arabic. He was like, what? Get out of my house right now. You garbage to me. And I said, no problem, Baba. I'm sorry. And I got up and I left. And then the next day after he came to the census, he emails, he I mean, emails me. He WhatsApps me a message telling me, how can you do this? You're my oldest son. You're supposed to take over. You're supposed to carry on our name. How are you going to leave? How are you going to leave Islam, Allah, and, and all this? And and then all your aunts and cousins in Lebanon are go, going crazy and calling. And I told him, no matter what, I'm still your son. Dad, you know, no matter what, I'll always be your son. It's just up to you if you want me to be your son. I, you'll always be my father and my dad, but it's up to you if you ever, you know. So me and my dad, we're okay. We're not just as close as we used to. No, nothing's ever the way it used to be. Um, and and just like I read in the Bible, you know, Jesus, he said he came to cause a division because he knew this was going to happen. Some people are not going to believe it. Yeah. But I can't, I can't go to hell for anybody especially th that hopelessness feeling I will never feel ever again. I will never go through that ever. And they had, an my family had, an they tried to have an intervention. You know, they tricked me telling me to come over to a barbecue in my uncle's house. One of my other uncles, very religious, very religious guy. So I go in the backyard and I see all these guys, you know, sitting around and right away I knew they set me up, but also not only did it set me up, but it gave me the opportunity to tell them what's going on because my dad wouldn't let me hear it. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let me explain nothing to him. So, you know, I got my uncles, my cousins. Oh, yeah, so, uh, so, so who's, who's Jesus to you or who's God and who's Muhammad and all they're asking all these trick, you know, trying to, you know, questions and stuff. And they're, you know, smiling, you know, laughing. Oh, really? <laughs> like that. And so I stood up, I go, listen, guys, I go, I'm going to tell you this one time. I'm not, and I, I pointed at every one of them. I'm not going to go to hell for you. I'm not going to go to hell for you. Not for you, not for you, not for you, not for my wife, not for my kids, not for anybody. I will not go to hell for any of them. If that means that you, that I don't, nobody wants to talk to me no more, that's fine. I'm fine with all of this because at the end of the day, you're going to be by yourself. You're, you're going to be by yourself. Nobody's going to be there to be like, God, you know what? Give him a chance. He's okay. Please, for me, help, you know. Nobody's going to be there except for Jesus, mm. except for Jesus. And the sooner people realize that, the sooner this life and everybody will be. Because you'll have that confidence of security. And when you have that confidence of security, and once you're in his grip, like he says, once you're in his grip, in his father's grip, you can never let go. And and there was times that I I, I I felt doubtful and that I, you know, I said, you know what, maybe I, I need, maybe I need to go, maybe I should go back. And then he'll give me another, he'll give me a dream. So I had this dream. There was this handsome, I don't want to sound like one of those, but he was a very handsome man standing there and he had a gold, it, it was a beautiful Quran and the pages were gold. I mean, it was so beautiful, this Quran he was holding and it was Arabic and Arabic and everything It's beautiful. And he has it open. And he's telling me, Amir, you have to come back to Islam. You have to come back to Allah. You have to come back. And he's and he's trying and he's telling me, come here, come here. And he's trying to show me, you know, versus what happens to people that leave Islam and what and if you commit, what happens when you commit shirk, partners with God, and what's going to happen to you in hellfire. And while he's coming at me with this Quran, I'm backing up and doing this to him. I'm saying, no, no, Jesus told me. He told me, I, 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 uh, 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 like that. So right away, he got so mad at me, and he threw he threw the Quran down. And he turned into like a 13 foot reptile, like a dragon, huge dragon. So I got scared right away and I jumped out the window. This was, this was like an apart. I was in an apartment building and I jumped out. I jumped out the window when I jumped out the window and landed. I, I, I feel there's something in my hand and it was a big, I thought it was a sword, but it wasn't a sword. It was a cross. And right away, the spirit came in me and says, go back up there. I'm with you. So I had no more fear and I ran, I ran up there and I kicked the door, I kicked the door in and it was pitch black in this room. And then, but the, the cross was showing light. So the cross was like a flashlight. 
So I'm looking for him. I'm like, where you at? Come on, where you at now? Where you at now? I got Jesus. Where you at now? So, and then there's this doorway and I, and he went like this. He peeked like this and his eyes were so big and like red. And they were, and as soon as he seen that cross, he vanished, vanished from me right away. And then like, that's what thinks like, you know, if, if Allah is the one and the Quran is the word of God, the devil wasn't scared of him or the Quran, but the devil was scared of the cross and he was scared of the name of Jesus. One time, one time. You see that? That's the, it's, it's, it, it just blows my mind. It just blows my mind how, how powerful he is and, and the love and, and the love and the protection, the protection when you, you, when you feel protected, you can nothing else can ever take that away. Nothing will ever make me change my mind. I will never turn back on the one who saved me. I will never, I owe him, I owe him my last breath. You know, I owe him everything and there's nothing I can ever do. That's enough that will ever repay that because Man, that feeling is just unbearable. I just don't wish it on the worst person in this world. I do never wish it on anybody. I wish people would just realize how much they're loved. You know, it's just in trust, God. That's all, you know, that's all he asks for is love and trust because he loves us so much that he gave right. his only begotten son. That's right. And his only begotten son has shown you over and over that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And just in these reoccurring dreams and these signs, it was it's amazing. See, I, I, I write, I write all my dreams down so I don't forget them. There's so many. I had like, ever since I've saved, I, I, I've, I had experience with them like 12 times, you know, like even in reality, in life, I'll ask him for something and he'll show me it. Like I'll say, you know, show me. One time we went camping. It, it, it was a beautiful, beautiful night. It was so beautiful. And it was late. It was 1130 or something like that. And I was at a bonfire by my camper and my wife told me she's going to give my son a shower. So this voice in my heart tells me, go to the beach. They had this beach at this campground. It was so beautiful. So I, I don't know why it told me to go to the beach for what? Why would I, why? I said, you know what? I'm not going to, so every time I feel, I hear this voice, I never go against it, you know, because every time I listen to it, something, something beautiful comes out of it. So I go to this beach and there's nobody there. It's pitch black. It's night. And the star, it was like you're in space. The stars were everywhere. I mean, I never seen so many stars like this in my life. It was so beautiful. And I was thanking God for this beautiful night. And I'm like, man, God, you're so amazing. Look at this beautiful world that you created and how we destroy it. Like we're so, we're, we take God for granted so in so many ways that it really, it's really disgusting that we're, that no matter how terrible, we're so terrible, but he still loves us so much. You know, and I prayed to him and I said, please, God, you know, please just show me that you're still with me. Show me that you hear me. God, please, please, please show me something. Please. I need to know that you're still with me, God. And I'm closing my eyes and I'm praying. And next thing you know, I hear him say, open your eyes now. And as soon as I opened my eyes, the shooting star came across. Then I, I, I jumped because I was, I was, I was on this lawn chair. I was laying back on this lawn chair. And I jumped off this lawn chair and I got on my knees again. I was like, oh, thank you, God. Wow. Thank you so much. I can't believe you're really doing this for me. You're like, wow, what? And then I'm like, wow. You know, I'm like, wow, you bring me up. You told me to come to the speech. And I prayed and you showed me this. You're like, how amazing is that? You know, it's just so amazing how much times he answers my prayers. You know, I mean, when you like, like he says, if you pray with all your heart and all your soul, he will answer you. He will answer you. And you don't, people got to realize something. You have to want God all the time. Not only when things are going bad, that people, people, they think they make, they try to make a fool out of God. Oh, how come God does this to me? Oh, how come God, does, you, you, they only want God when it's convenient for them and when things are going bad. But when things are going good and everything is good, people forget to thank God for those good moments mm -hmm. that we have, you know, and it, it's very hurtful. And I never realized all these things until until after I, until after the spirit came dwelt in me, you know, and, and I received the spirit. It's just, I, like I told you, I have 360 vision, like everything's answered for me. My prayers are answered. God is so amazing. I mean, what he does for me, it's just so amazing. Um, uh, I had so many, like, I mean, if I, I could go through dreams and dream, like 
man. Amir, didn't you have a dream too where he showed you heaven? Yes, that's why that's a revelation 22. That's what I was gonna get to. Okay. So that's that's when my back was healed. So I the dream was I was in I was in heaven and there was this beautiful valley, and the colors in heaven are beyond uh words that can explain. So I'm just gonna it was greener than green because everything's enhanced, and there was there were so many beautiful trees, and every tree had somebody standing under it. And I'm like, man, it's beautiful. Like, but why is like I was wondering why is everybody standing under trees? And right away. The tree of life, you know, it's like, wow, you look, wow. So I was holding this book in my hand and I thought it was a Bible. And then I didn't realize it until it's until I read it in the Bible. That's where I knew what it really was. But so right now I'm thinking it's a, a Bible and I'm holding this Bible and I'm looking in this middle of this valley. There's this waterfall coming from the sky, coming from like a, a mountain, but I can't see the end of it, but it's, and it's coming down and in between and on each side of this uh, river, this waterfall, there's these ancient, beautiful, 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 ancient walls. They were just ancient, man. You could tell they were like century, like from way, like way back. They were ancient. And the wa the waterfall wasn't water like water. It, they were diamonds. It was diamonds. The water was diamonds. It was alive. Everything is alive and everything, everything is alive. Everything. The trees are alive. The grass is alive. The water is alive. It, it, the water is just sparkling like diamonds. And I, I, I was so intrigued about this waterfall that I wanted to go in it so bad. So I'm trying to go in it. And as soon as I did, like, it, like I went through this waterfall part. And when I went through this waterfall, and then it was a huge castle. There was this huge white castle, white and gold all over. Gold, white and gold everywhere. So I op I go in this room and I open it. And there's there kids sitting on, uh, on this round table, there were kids and these kids, they were, you know, doing some uh, drawing or reading and they had books, I don't know, Bibles or whatnot. But then I seen Jesus and his back was facing me because he was bent, he was doing this and writing something. And then right away, I'm like, I, I, I'm running around this table, around the kids. I'm like, Jesus, it's you, it's you. I haven't seen you. I've, I've been waiting 30, 30 years to see you again. And he told me, so he goes, Amir, it's so nice to see you again. And he, and he turned around and right away I just grabbed and he hugged me and I hugged him and I'm hugging him. And while I'm hugging him, I the hug is so amazing. And I'm looking behind him and there's a window and I'm, I'm trying to take everything in. And I could see this garden with the flowers and the flowers are doing this. Everything is alive. And they're waving like this. They're huge flowers. They look like big sunflowers, but they were different colors. And they were waving like this. And I'm trying to I'm trying to remember everything. And I'm holding them so tight, so tight. I'm like, I waited 30 years to see you again. Oh, my. This is so amazing. I love you. I love you. I love you. And then he told me, he told me he loves me, too. And he said that I have to go. I go, I don't want to go. Please, please, I don't want to go. He's like, I'm, you have to go. I was like, but please promise that I'll see you. Am I going to see you again? And he promised me. He promised that I'm going to see him again. So I hold on to that. I hold on to that for my life because he'll never break his promise. And that's, and that's when, and that's when I, and that's part of that, uh, that revelation 22, when John was uh, seeing the vision of heaven and the, the trees and all that. And then the, that book I was holding was the book of life. And I thought it was the Bible, but it was the book of life that I was holding in my hand. Wow. And it was the book of life. So he showed me where I was going before I accepted him which was hell. Mm -hmm. And he showed me where I am going because I have him with me. Wow. Well, amazing. It's like, yes. Full circle. And, so and amazing. I love that dream of heaven. Like it's so exciting. Oh, I, mean, it's, it's, I could feel the so love. Amazing. Yeah. And, and I, had a, I had another one. He showed me another one. And this one was, it, it was a courtroom. And this courtroom was, wood beautiful beautiful cedar wood it was so beautiful and it was huge it looked like a huge stadium huge and there was nobody in it and there was this and my 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 focus focused on this bull uh, this uh the pulpit kind of thing there was a there was a single thing with one chair on it and it had a and it had a like a microphone on there and uh and jesus was behind me i, I couldn't see him because he was he was showing me all these things and he was behind me and i'm like i'm like what is this and he said to me, on the day of judgment, there's going to be a, 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 a guy that's going to say to all the Arab nations who, that Jesus is the way. And his voice is very strong and everybody's going to believe it. That's what he told me. He told me that there's going to be somebody that's going to, with a strong voice, that will, that will tell the Arab nations 
the, about Jesus. And he said, it's going to be a Jordanian guy, some Jordanian guy. I don't know. That's what, that's what I was told. So in the, this courtroom, it was so big, so big. I mean, it was, it was on um, seats everywhere. And it, it, it was so big. It, it could fit the whole world in it. That's how big it, it was. Huge. It was huge. Yeah. Your eyes, I mean, everywhere, like, like so many different levels, so many different levels. And then I had another dream. It was the rapture. And all the people that were with Christ were in one line. And people that were left going to be left behind and people that are going to go to hell are in, in another uh, across from us. And the people that are across from us, it's weird because there's nothing in between us, but they can't come across on our side. So I'm looking at their at them and I'm saying to myself, wow, these poor people, man, I wish they would have listened. I wish they, I kept on saying this to myself. I wish they would have listened. And so then I see my uncle, my religious uncle, and he's jumping, he's jumping up like this, trying to, trying to find where I'm at. And his eyes are so big. He's so in shock. And I see him like this and I call him. I'm, I'm, so I, he couldn't come to me, but I went to him and he came to me and I grabbed him. I go, I go, what? He's like, he's like what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I go, I go, uncle, I try to tell you. I tried to tell you when we were alive, but you didn't believe me. You didn't want to believe me. You, you, told, you tried to tell me that um, you didn't believe me. So what do you want me to do? I can't help you. That's what I told him. I go, I can't help you no more. You had to tell Jesus to save you. That's why every time in my dreams that I said this, I say the same thing that my angel said. I told him, you have to tell Jesus to save you because he's the only one that could save you. But you didn't listen to me. You didn't listen. And that's it. And they were, and, and he, he was gone. Those people were left behind. Then I had another dream of a flood. And this flood, it flooded everything. All the streets, all the cities, cars were flooding. Everything was flooding. And then I see my cousin. And my cousin, he's screaming for me. Help me, help me. He can't scream. I'm going to drown. I'm going to drown. And then I was trying. I When I jumped in the water to save him, but the water was so fast. It was moving everything so fast that I couldn't catch to him. So I grabbed onto this pole. And I see him screaming, going like this. And I told him, hurry, hurry, tell Jesus, hurry, tell him, hurry, tell him, tell him to come and save you. Hurry, tell him before your soul leaves your body. Hurry, I'm ready to do it now. Hurry, come on, do it, do it. But he didn't. And he drowned it. And he died. And I, and, and when I tell them, because I told them, when I, I, and they don't believe me, you know, they just, they just don't want to believe it. And it's, it's, it's hard, but it's, I understand because. When you're programmed, when you're a, since you're a baby, I mean, since when you're the moment you're born, your father, your uncle, whoever whispers in Fatiha in your ear. So the moment I was born, I was Muslim, you know. And ever since then, you're programmed. Allah, Muhammad, Allah, Muhammad, the prophets, Allah. You don't ever, don't ever, don't ever commit shirk. Don't ever leave your religion. Those two things, you straight to hell. No questions asked. There's no chances. There's no questions asked straight to hell. So when you're programmed with that mentality all your life, it's very hard to accept anything else. It's very, 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 very hard. Not only are you fearful, but you're also, people are also fearful of losing their family because we're so family oriented. And, you know, disappointing our family is like the biggest uh, disgrace. And, but I had to do it. I had no choice. You know, people tell me, how can you How can you be a Christian? How can you believe in Jesus? I had no choice. I had no choice. When, when God shows you something so many times and does so many things for you, mm. how crazy would I be to ign keep ignoring them? I ignored them and I ignored him. And if I would have died in, in any, of the, any of those moments, I would have went to hell. With the Muslim's faith, Amir, do, do you have the guarantee of heaven, like the assuredness that you have now with Jesus? In Islam, we say, Allah bi'amal. Only Allah knows. Allah amal, that's it. Only God knows. You're not guaranteed. You're predestined, actually. Actually, there's no free will in Islam. You are predestined before you're even born. God already has it to, if you're going to hell or not. Hmm. And... You're not guaranteed, no matter how many times you pray, no matter how many times you fast, no matter how religious you are, you're never guaranteed. You're guaranteed hell. 
That's the funny part. But you're not guaranteed paradise. Unless you commit jihad and you die for the sake of Allah's name. You know, in, 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 a, uh, in a religious war uh, for the cause of Allah. That's the only way that you will not be judged. And speaking of the war, I know that that's going on even now as we speak. What do you, what would you say to that? Like I was saying before, that's the problem. None of them have the love of Jesus. That's why Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Without Jesus, you're never going to have peace either side. And you know what? In Muslims, I despise the Jews. I really did. I, I, I hated them because of, of first of how they turned their back on Allah and how what they do to the uh, Palestinians. That's how my take was on it. But now I love everybody the same. I love the Jews so much. I love the Palestinians so much because we're created in God's image. Yes. Whatever God created, I'm in love with. I don't yes. care what it is. If God created it, an ant, I love ants. A fly, I love a fly. Speaking of fly, that that's another topic. And I'm not even going to mention it because people really think I'm crazy. <laughs> but I do got proof of that too. A fly coming back to life in Jesus' name. Everything that God created, I am so intrigued with and I love so much. No matter who it is, because it's not their fault that they believe in something that's not true. And it's not their fault that they have the, the hostility and the hate and the feelings toward things, you know, because... When you don't have Jesus, you're just full of evilness. And whether Jews, Palestine, Russia, Ukraine, no matter what, this whole world is just a disaster without Christ, without the, sure. the, the Prince of Peace. Without the Prince of Peace, you can't have peace. You know, there's no such, you can never have peace. It can't, it can't happen. And that's and, why there's no peace. And because the enemy's loves. mission is to divide us. Nobody you know, like, loves. Nobody yeah. loves. It's a problem. Everybody Everybody wants to take advantage of everybody and everybody wants to be greedy and everybody wants to make themselves God. They want to make themselves, they think they know it all. They think they have it all figured out. Well, mm -hmm. I got news. None of us have anything figured out, you know? And that's why there's so many different religions. That's why there's so many different wars. That's why there's so many different people killing each other, hating each other, because they're all lost. They're yeah. all, they're all uh, blind and deceived. I we need Jesus as our savior more than ever. More and, than, and especially now, especially now. And, and this is how you know the Bible is true because all this is in the Bible is prophesied. Everything is yeah. prophesied right there in, your, in front of our eyes. And, and, and people are still blind. They don't want to see, you know, all the sick stuff that's happening in this world. It's so sickening. And, and there's no, yeah. it can never Jesus. get, it can't get better unless until Jesus, that's the only way. Jesus you know? come quickly. That's all I Jesus can say. Jesus come quickly. But everything is on his timing. Yeah. You know, his his ways are not like our ways. Mm -hmm. And people they don't they they this they they just they try to figure it out. God God you can never figure it out. You can never figure out what he does. He works in mysterious ways. You know, yeah. everything he does is for a reason. You know, and just like Jesus, you know, you can deny him all you want and say this, but there's a, he was born perfect for a reason. He was born from a virgin for a reason. He was sinless for a reason. And that reason is for us, for us. So we can have reconciliation with God because he's the bridge. He's the bridge. Without him, we, ha we, we are separated. Just like Adam created that one sin and God separated from instantly. And imagine us, we sin more every single day. So no matter how many times we pray and we fast and we uh, we do everything, we're still committing sins in some kind of a way. And and we're filthy rags. We always come short of the glory of God. God is so perfect and so glorious that he deserves and expects perfection. And there's nobody else that's perfect other than Jesus Christ. And that's he's perfect for that reason. Yeah. He's the Lamb of God, the Lamb without blemish. And people need to realize that. You know, you could say, "Oh, sec, why would God want to do all that? Why can't He just?" Say? Because God is also just. He's mm -hmm. also just, and God never goes back on His words. He never changes His mind. He never. Everything is set in stone, because He's perfect. Yeah. And. And, and, and people and people they don't want to realize this. They they want to, you know, 
well, how come God did this? Well, how come God did that? Well, when it's your time on judgment day, you ask him why God did this and why God did that. You know, we don't have all the answers. We will never have all the answers. Every day we learn something new. No matter how many times you read your Bible, no matter how many times you read your Quran, no matter how many times a Buddhist reads his Bible and a Hindu reads his Bible, you're never going to figure God out in any in any kind of way because our brain, we only use a certain amount of it for a reason. Mm. We don't know. We only know what's earthly. That's why Jesus yeah. says, that's why Jesus said, the thing, I tell you worldly things and you can't understand. How can I tell you heavenly things? How? You will never understand it. And people will never understand it. You know, but but once you have that trust and that love, there's nothing else that can ever get in that way. Yeah. You know, and going back to the peace and the hope. And hope. That's the number. Yeah. That, that word right there is embedded in my life. Hope. 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 You don't understand how you, that word. Hope and hopeless. Yeah. hopeless. And that's and the message that, of the cross and Jesus and your yes, story right. and your testimony. Yes. And the, the afterlife, the afterlife, the hopelessness feeling is beyond your imagination. You can never comprehend it. You can never handle it. Nobody will ever be able to handle that. They, I'm telling you, it's worse than knowing that I was going to hell because me knowing that I was going to hell, at least I thought, Okay, God will still hear me if I cry out to him in hell. But no, 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 no. <laughs> Man. Wow. Wow. Once and you're you did... here today. You're here today so that people can please hear this message from you. Without the Lord Jesus, there's no hope. Through. Without Jesus, yes. there's no hope. You could believe me. You could call me a liar. You can say I'm a good actor. You can say I'm getting paid. You can say whatever you want to say. But I have God as my witness. Yeah. That's the only witness I need because I have all these people telling me, oh, you're fake. Oh, recite the Fatiha. Recite how many they, they always try to give me trick questions to see if I'm a fake Muslim. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. There's only one that I have to prove to, and that's Jesus Christ. Nobody else matters to me. Now, yeah. I don't care what, even if I tell you what you want to hear, you're still not, you're still gonna call me a liar. You're still gonna hate me and, and despise me, anyways. So it doesn't matter. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. God is the only witness that I need. And he's the only one that I'm going to be facing at the end of the day. You know, well, and, and that's, that's I just that. want to thank you so much for sharing with me, with our yeah, audience. There's so, there's so much more, man. There's so okay. Much more. Do, tell it. Is, is there anything else on your heart? I would love to hear. <sighs> I'm just, I just really want people to understand. Like rejoice. You know, people are always, you know, in a bad mood for stupid stuff that doesn't even matter. Hey, if you're late on your bills, who cares? Who cares? It's going to be there tomorrow. It's going to be there the next week. Who cares? Nothing is nothing is worth being hopelessness for on this earth. It's This life is just a, a vapor. We're, we're here and we're gone in a blink of an eye. And before we know it, before we know it, we're all going to be facing that same experience. Either we're going to be falling in a black abyss. And for some people, it's going to be too late because I was fortunate enough to my soul didn't leave my body. But some people, it's instant. And some people, when it's instant and your soul leaves your body, you're going to be doomed. There's no second. There's no other chance. There's not going to be all. Oh, uh, no, none of that. You have to believe and you have to know that Jesus is who he says he is. And Jesus did what he says he did. It's it's factual, it's historical, it's proven, and it's proven on earth. The things that Jesus does, his name, what his name does, the power in his name, what it does in life, in reality, it says it right there. You know, you don't need no visions or dreams or none of that stuff. It's it, it's in front of us. It's, in, it's all in front of us. It, it, it's all in front of us. We just need to do what he said love each other talk to each other and, and 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 reason with each other just like god even god says in isaiah let's reason together god wants to reason with us how, how beautiful is that you know people think that god's this oh big old man with a beard telling you oh you can't do this you're going to hell you can't do this oh no you're going to hell for that one you're going to hell for this one going to hell. but he's all love he's all love mm. And, and that love and that love will set you free that will it will it will set you free 
and take the load off and give you hope. And the scripture you said, Matthew eleven twenty eight, and I'm just going to recite it. it, says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's the loving God that you have, found, Jesus Christ. Who can say that? But Jesus, who else? Who, what other prophet ever said anything like these things? Nobody. That's how you know Jesus is who he says he is. Mm. Will you pray? He, he changed He changed my life. Yes. He changed my life. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. What an honor. What an honor and a blessing. Father God, I come to you to thank you, to glorify you, God, to thank you for this beautiful opportunity and this a beautiful moment that you that you allowed me to share my story to people that are doubtful or to people that are lost to people that have questions that need answers god i hope that you i pray that you please answer them lord show them you yes. say call on to me yes. and you will show things that we do not know you say to trust you not yeah. and you're you are knocking on our door. All we need to do is just open this door yes. and let you in. Yes. And God, yes. if we let you in, the amazing things that you do will set these lost souls free. Yes, Jesus. God, I pray for these people. I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for I pray for everybody that's that's really that really is seeking yeah. with their hearts. You know, seeking with their hearts and their souls, Lord. Those are the ones that you love and you answer, yes. because you know our hearts. That's you right. Know, you know we're real. You know what? You know who's real. You know who's fake. You know who's gonna be. No, nobody can mock, make a mockery of you, God. That's right. Yes. You're and I forever. just want to pray as well. I just feel this too for for those that that whatever you know religion or thing that you grew up with and, and it's not about Jesus, I pray that your heart would would uh, soften. And if there's hardened hearts that go, well, I just, you know, what they're dealing with not believing that, that, that you would just soften your heart and just ask, say, Jesus, can you just show me? And I pray for supernatural visitations, Lord, to come to these people that even if they have a hint of curiosity, a hint of openness, that you would, that you would just open that up and show this Holy Spirit of truth would come in and show. I just pray for supernatural visitations right now, tonight, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.